For more on the desertification in China, I'm joined by Vince Beisner, live from Burbank in California. His latest book, The World in a Grain, was just released today. It's about sand, which he's called the world's most important yet most overlooked commodity. Welcome, Vince, and thank you for joining us here at Global Business. Thanks. It's great to be here. Now, for people who are new to this industry, what are the most widely used methods of greening a desert? Well, I think there's a, there are a lot of different methods. In, in China, uh, the most famous and probably the biggest single project is what's called the Green Great Wall, where the government has undertaken to plant a belt of trees 3,000 miles long, so in the distance from San Francisco to Boston, that they aim to, uh, to create an, a, an entire wall of trees. And the idea there is that it will sort of block the, the desert from expanding any further. So what aspects of fighting desertification in the Kubuchi Desert can be applied to other desert areas in China and potentially the world? Well, it's a really good question. I mean, the government and the entrepreneurs that are, that are involved in that, in, uh, in, in foresting the Kubuchi, say that it's been a great success and uh, can serve as a real model for other places. And they have planted millions, I mean, actually billions uh, of trees there. But it's a real question as to whether uh, that success will last, basically whether those trees will survive and for how long. Because we're talking about an area where there never were trees before. Uh, there were, you know, in some areas you had, you know, sort of scrub grass and, and sort of a, a much smaller plants that, you know, which were living off the small amounts of moisture that was there. But the concern about all the trees that have been planted in the Kubchi is that they may end up sucking up all that underwater underground water that is there, and then they'll eventually die off. And when they do, there won't be any water left at all for the few plants that used to survive. So it's actually, this, the desert is definitely much greener today than it was a few years ago because they have planted millions and millions of trees. But it's still kind of an open question as to whether that's going to succeed in the long run. So you've mentioned sustainability. What are some of the other big challenges when it comes to fighting desertification in China? So the really big issues are uh, you, have, uh, you have an area. It's, when we're talking about desertification, it's not so much that the desert is expanding. It's that the land surrounding the desert is drying out. And that's mostly our fault. It's human beings' fault. It's because around deserts, you have drier sort of marginal grasslands, typically. And that's the, that's the situation uh, around the Gobi Desert in China. Um, the population living in those areas has exploded in the last 50 years. Millions and millions of more people have moved into those areas, and they're pulling much more groundwater out to use in cities and to use in industry. And also, uh, there's much more cattle, much more livestock that are grazing, eating the grass in those areas. The result is the plants are gone, the, the land itself becomes much drier, the wind, when the wind sweeps across, there's no, uh, the, there's no plants there to anchor the topsoil. And so the desert, the, the land dries out and the desert expands. And this is a problem that we're seeing in a lot of parts of the world. So one school of thought is, the, the main approach that the Chinese government has taken is, well, let's plant, let's go back into these areas and just plant a lot of plants and plant a lot of trees to stop that desert from advancing. A lot of people would argue that a better approach would be to just scale back on industry in those areas and scale back on grazing and plant only small plants, only grasses and shrubs that can survive there, that are indigenous to those areas and have a better chance of surviving. Now, it's interesting because in your newly released book, you talk about sand being the most important yet most overlooked commodity. Tell us more about that. Well, so sand, totally separate from deserts, uh, is really the thing that our cities are made out of. Not talking about desert sand, but the sand that you find at the bottom of rivers, on the bottom of lakes, on the seabed, that's the stuff that, uh, that, that cities are literally made out of. Every building in the world, every, every office tower, every apartment block, every shopping mall is made out of concrete, essentially. And concrete is really nothing but sand and gravel that's been stuck together with cement. Also, all the roads that connect all those buildings are also made out of sand and gravel. The windows in all those buildings are made of glass. Glass is nothing but melted down sand. Even the silicon chips that power our computers and our cell phones also made out of sand. So without sand, there's really no modern civilization. 
And a big, believe it or not, we are starting to run out of that commodity, of sand itself. Now, as we saw in our report, we saw an entrepreneur really taking advantage of fighting desertification, using it to start a business that also led to infrastructure. So talk about some of the business opportunities that open up when you're fighting desertification. So there's a lot of, there is a lot of money to be made right now in China uh, fighting desertification, mainly because the government is pouring a lot of money into it. The government uh, supports most of these tree planting programs. So indeed, when, when I was there, as I talk about in my book, I, I also met some, some other local folks living there who said that this has been wonderful for their livelihood, that they've made a lot of money and their families live much better and, and so on. Um, so there's the tree planting itself, sort of contracting for the government. Um, there are some places also that are working on growing crops in the desert. There are uh, certain crops sort of especially traditional Chinese medicinal herbs and licorice, things like that, that can grow in the desert. And there are some companies that are trying to turn those into a commercial crop. There's also the idea of solar power. When I was there, I went out to an enormous solar power farm that's being built out in the Kubchi Desert. And that seems like a pretty obvious idea, right? If there's one thing there's no shortage of in the desert, it's sunlight. And if you can convert all that sunlight into electricity and sell that into cities, that's a good money-making opportunity. Indeed. Thank you so much for your insights. We'll have to leave it there. Vince Beisner, journalist and author of The World in a Grain, which was just released today.